It's Matthew back with the Huddle Haas, and today I am in my basement kitchen, and I'm going to be canning up some sausage. Uh, my brother-in-law, Anthony, had raised out three hogs uh, this year, and uh, they were beautiful. I think they were some for heritage breed, Berkshire uh, something cross, I believe that's what they were, and he raised them up using uh, our southern states has a... Um, uh, I think it's called a 4-H blend hog feed that he uh, fed them. And I think he did some uh, dump milk from my in-law's cows. Uh, but anyway, he grew them up and they were beautiful pigs. Uh, I thought so. They were stocky and hardy and stout looking. And he sent them to the butcher. A new butcher uh, opened up here in our area. It's family friends, and we're glad uh, that they have this. And what he did was, I guess, he seasoned them up, and he put them to links. And, bless his heart, he put them in uh, chunks, here you can see, uh, that will be perfect for, for canning up into pint jars. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, is I'm just going to be stuffing this into jars, and uh, we're going to be canning it. This is great to have just to open it up and heat it up and you're good to go. So this will be something else for our seller. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fill up these jars. I have clean hands. I have cleaned off this space here and uh, I'm just going to fill the fill these in. Just going to drop. I wish the lighting was better, but we're just going to drop this in to our jars. And I'm not going to put any water or anything like that. I'm just going to, well, you can't really see it that well, but I'm just going to stuff as many in here as I can. And you could do this in pints or quarts, um, small mouth or large mouth jars, whatever works best for you. And I'm just going to put this aside grab the next one and I'm just going to keep filling these up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a damp rag and I'm just going to um, clean off every single jar to make sure there's nothing there. Uh, you could clean it off. I know a lot of people use vinegar water and sometimes I use that too. Uh, but I'm just going to clean all of these off before I put the lids on. I have the lids. Uh, these aren't ball lids. These come from a, a Amish food or a bulk uh, food store and uh, I know with the ball ones and some of them you don't have to boil them anymore or heat them up on the stove um, I still do these you know some habits die hard and uh, so yeah I have them boiling off I always make sure that there's no chipping uh, on these lids or on these jars that they're not gonna crack when they're in there. So then I'm going to go get the jar lids. Okay, so I'm going to put my jar lids on and I'm going to take my ring and I'm just going to tighten it fingertip. Like I don't really want to uh, turn it too hard. Um, I just want it to be fingertip 
tight. And these lids are hot to touch. And then I have my All-American canner. This is the one that holds um, 14 quarts. And so I'm just using it as uh, the manufacturer says, uh, putting the amount of water that the manufacturer says, which, you know, really isn't a lot when you think you need to fill it up with water. You really don't uh, because it's going to use that steam to build up pressure. So I'm just going to continue to do this and I'll bring you back when I'm putting them in the pressure canner. So I have all of my pints in there. And now I'm just going to add on my uh, canner lid. And there's an arrow. I don't know if you can see it right there. That lines up with that notch. And you just want to make sure that it's good. And So then we're just going to take these sides. And I'm going to tighten up the opposite ones just to start with. And then I'll go around and then I'll tighten. It's hard to do with one hand. And I'll tighten them up. So I'll do that one and this one and then that one and that one and that one and that one. And this is a separate canner. It's a different. I didn't have enough room in the big one. So I pulled out this one. This one only holds uh, five quarts. So I put those in, and uh, this one is a little different. So all you have to do with this one is line it up. It has a, uh, a ring inside there, and you just line it up. You don't have anything to screw in, and again, it's hard to do with one hand. There we go. And so again, we're going to let this come up to steam. Now this has, you can see here, let me get my drawer. This has different ones to choose from. The small one is five. The middle one is, excuse me. <clears throat> the small one is five. This one is 10 and this one is 15. So I'm going to wait till those come up to temperature before I put the weights on. So this one has come up and it is steaming pretty good. I don't know if you can see that or not, um, but I'm going to put on the 10 pound and let that come up. Once it comes up to 10 pound, it will start, this will start jiggling kind of like that. And that's when I will kind of regulate it so it's not jiggling too hard. Now this one, hasn't come up yet because I had the back bur I had the front burner on and the back burner turned off and it was on the back burner. But this one will come up come up here soon. Uh, so I'll put the pressure, the weight on this. And like I said, I'm gonna let this jiggle. So once this jiggles, um, for I'm gonna let it jiggle for 75 minutes. And then after it's done, I'm gonna turn it off and let it set and then it will be done. And so I'll bring you back when I have taken them out and let them cool and uh, finish this vlog.